Hello everyone and welcome for this new video. In this one it's a pretty exciting one because we are going to talk about the very best technique that you can use if you want to improve the realism in your drawings. This technique is called Sight Size. Let's do it. So this technique, Sight Size, is uh, quite famous. It's a pretty old technique and it's been used for centuries to create very traditional classical atelier drawings like this one, figure drawings like this one, for instance. So this technique is to me the very best to improve the realism and accuracy. There are some limitations that we are going to talk about, but in terms of training, in terms of student core practice, um, it's really a, an essential thing to to give a try at some point. It's, it's not really a technique, it's more a method. It's a way of working. And it's a way of organizing your brain and force your brain to see differently than it would normally for a drawing freehand. It's a way of organizing the method to make sure that you get to the essential parts of realism in a drawing. It's an important step to take. It's just as important for an athlete to go to the gym and work out. So a basketball athlete, for instance, can go to the gym and work out a lot. It's going to help a lot. It's not gonna make him or her better at basketball, but it's going to make him or her stronger. And that's the, the same thing for sight size. You should not see that as the 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 go-to way uh, to do any drawing you should see that as an as an improvement method for better drawings uh, it can be used for any subject uh, mostly it's used for cast drawing cast painting like this sort of subject it works really well for still life it works well for uh, figure drawing, figure painting. It works for portrait, but I would say that for portrait, it has its limitations and it's important to not get stuck into this technique. So I'm gonna present you the technique, but please do not get stuck. Plus, I'm gonna present you the, the technique, but just what refers to the actual sight size all the, um, the things that you have to learn for the drawings, I'm not gonna talk in this video because it would just take uh, too much time. So I'm gonna just talk about what you need to use the sight size uh, technique in your own studio. First thing you need, an easel. You need an easel that can be at a 90 degree angle. That's very important. The entire idea of sight size is to reduce the angles that most of the time create some distortion that your brain has to adapt to. So the idea is to get rid of that and have something extremely flat so that there is no angle perspective between your eyes, your model and your subject. That's the core thing about sight size. You should use a plumb line and, uh, and you should be good. You need a support and everything needs to be at the, the level of your eyes because again, as I said, the sight size is all about not having the distortions that you have in your field of view when you're moving your head. Right here, the subject and the model are placed so that whenever I step back to the point that I'm going to show you later, this is also a very important thing, it's the viewing point. Uh, whenever I step back, I just have to move my, my eyes, just poof, poof. You have to use your visual memory and visual memory, it does not last for a very long time. So being able to just go back and forth very quickly, it really helps you in that regard. So whenever you have the stand for your model and your easel, you need to determine a viewing spot. And this viewing in spot is in the median line between the model and the subject. And you should step back at a distance that at least 
three times the size of your subject, at least. You can go further, it's just going to make you walk back further. If I want to make it appear bigger, I have to take the model and make it closer to the viewing point than the easel. And if I want to make it appear smaller, I need to put the model behind the easel and uh, further way back. It's what happens generally for uh, figure drawing. When you're ready to start, you have to start with the top line and bottom line and sort of put your subject in a box to make sure that you have the, the right height. Everything has to be done at the exact same size, at the right height, and everything is at the height that you see at the viewing spot. Now, everything is at eye level, and the idea of sight size is to do comparative measurements. And you do comparative measurements only from the viewing spots. It's, it takes some getting used to because it's not very natural. Generally, you want to draw where you're at and look at the model where you're at. The essential idea of sight side is this. You have to make a guess, you place a small line, then you have to step back, you compare by going back and forth with your eyes, and then you make your corrections and you repeat. You go back, you compare, you make your corrections and repeat. That's, that's how it goes. After that, there are tons of techniques that you can use to complete the drawing. This one is not even finished, it's just to give you the, the basic idea. You can push it further and, and go into more realism. You can basically do whatever you want with this technique. The core idea is to have the proportions right without any distortion, without any angle that your brain has to adapt to, and to be able to step back always at the exact same spot to do some comparative measurement. The sight size helps in being more structured, more methodical in your drawing, in your approach to drawing. But that being said, the sight size is only a method for realism and accuracy. It does not go really further than that. It's exactly like for an athlete that plays basketball or football, you would think that, yeah, it is really going to help them to work out and go to the gym and, and, and push some iron. But in the end, it's not going to help to actually play the game, right? It's exactly the same with sight size. It's sort of training your eyes, exercising, it's a workout for your brain to understand that the core essential fundamentals. It's mostly something that you do when you're learning. Once you have understood all these things, once you're sort of in the matrix, um, you don't have to do sight size constantly. Well, you can if you feel comfortable with that, but you don't necessarily have to. What it can be good for is taking some habits like for instance, I don't do sight size constantly anymore. Sometimes I do use sight size, but mostly what sight size brought me is the, the habit of uh, stepping back, which is a huge thing. Even if it's not always at the same spot, the, the habit of stepping back, of um, painting and drawing at arm's length, these are some, some key things that even if you're not really into a methodical sight size approach, there are still some valuable um, concepts that you want to follow. Now, the pros and cons. Pros, it's because it's a great learning technique. Cons, of course, is it can be restrictive. It can be constraining. It can sort of force students to do too much comparative measurements and not let the free drawing um, take place. At some point, you cannot always go to the gym and work out. You have to be on the field and, and actually play the game, right? 
well, it's exactly the same thing with sight size. You have to get there. You have to exercise your brain, force your eyes to see differently. But once it's there, it's going to be there forever. That's the great thing about, uh, about drawing, about painting with sight sizes. Once it's there, it's there forever. Unlike uh, actually uh, working out at the gym where you have to constantly exercise every day, every week. Um, for this type of thing, drawing sight sizes, you do the exercise a couple of, of years when you're studying and um, at some point you can free yourself from the restrictive way of seeing and you can really expand the field of possibilities in your drawings and your paintings. So tell me guys, what do you think about this? Uh, do you use side size? Uh, how do you set up? Not many people naturally take this sort of setup with a 90 degree easel with a model next to it. It's, it's not very natural at first. Most people are used to draw at, at an angle, like maybe on their knees, on a table, where you have a lot of distortions and many people don't really understand why it's so hard. And whenever they start, um, start working at 90 degree angle with the model right next to the subject, they all of a sudden they understand, wow, this was there all along. I just needed to have the right setup to see it. And that's what sight size brings. It's not a miracle technique, just a great method that you have to use at some point to force your eyes to see a certain way and become stronger. When everything will be clear in your head, thanks to this method, you will be able to see everything with the same principles, but without the restrictive setup. All right, that's it for this video. As always, guys, don't hesitate to like, subscribe, and let me know if you knew about this technique, this method. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I always paint and draw standing up and that I always stand back. So you might have wondered why. And this is a habit that I've taken from this method. So this is the reason why. Do you use it? And uh, what do you think about it? There are pros and cons. It can be restrictive, but it's also liberating in a way. It's just a good balance, just like everything in the world of art. Let me know what you think. As always, guys, I see you for the next video and uh, have fun drawing.